I'm going to reread the end of this paragraph on page 156 because the last recording cut me off. What faint light they shed fell gloomily upon some roof corner or a waving strand of vine, transforming familiar daytime shapes to eerily unfamiliar phantoms. Gebu was not in sight. I waited too long, Ranifer thought. He could be streets away by this time, and I don't know which way he went. A voice inside him said, Coward, you're simply making excuses. But I promised the ancient I would never follow at night. Ranifer told the voice, I gave my word. Coward, here is your chance at last, and you're afraid to take it. You're afraid. Yes, I'm afraid, Ranifer thought desperately. <clears throat> but he could not endure the voice any longer, touching his head down as far as it would go between sorry, tucking his head down as far as it would go between his hunched up shoulders. He darted down the black street in the direction of the river. Whether it was the right direction or not, he had no idea. Gebu might have gone the opposite way or followed one of a dozen crooked alleys across the city toward Wenemann's house. Yes. Would he not have done that? Ranifer whirled and doubled back, casting a shrinking look over his shoulder as he did so. He saw nothing but blackness, heard nothing but the light staccato of his own frightened feet. I must say a charm, he thought, as he peered through the darkness, for the darker rectangle, which would be an alley's entrance, turning his eyes every instant to this side and that, for fear some unknown thing would pounce upon him if he did not keep watch. Avant, ye dead man, he whispered hastily, who comes in the darkness, who enters stealthily with, the, with nose behind, face turned backwards. The whisper changed to an uncontrollable, uncontrollable chattering of teeth as Ranifer halted beside the narrow panel of blackness he was seeking. The alley was darker than the street, much darker and much more frightening, if that were possible. Gingerly he stepped into it. Avant, ye dead woman, who comes in the d darkness, who enters stealthily, without nose be with with nose behind, f f face turned backwards. The very words he was saying frightened him into a drenching sweat. They conjured up so clearly the horrors that might that might be creeping up behind him now, this minute or lurking behind that object near the wall, whatever it was, or hovering just over the head with withered hands stretching out to seize him. Ranifer whirled in a panic to stare behind him and above him, at the same time stumbling back away from the unknown object near the wall. At that instant, three things happened. A blow behind his knees knocked his feet from under him, and sent him sprawling. Something soft and bodiless rushed past him, even while sharp, claw-like fingers seized his shoulders in a dozen different places, and the night was rent by a wild and eerie screech. Ranifer tried to scream, but he could not, or else he screamed and could not hear it over the hideous reverberations of that other noise. He tore himself free of the clawing figures, half fell, half threw himself out of the alley, and by the time the last shivering wail had died away, was tugging at his own gate. One last agonized glance backward as he flung it open showed him a lean, gliding shape on the top of a wall, silhouetted against the stars, then the gate slammed behind him. He leaned against it, trembling all over and too weak to walk another step. After a while he was shakily, he went shakily to his mat and dropped upon it. It took him some time to quiet his breathing, longer to stop trembling, and longer still to remember some fleeting familiarity, familiarity about that gliding shape he had seen. For a while his mind would not accept it, 
than a cat called from somewhere down the street. A low and quavering drawn-out wail. Ranifer's hair lifted in a cold tremor of recognition, which was followed by burning shame. Could it have been a cat? Only a cat from which he had fled as if it were a demon? No, impossible. Remember the blow behind the knees? The bodiless something rushing past him? The clawing fingers? His shoulders still stung from the scratches. When he put his hand to them, he could feel the little welts. He felt again frowning. They felt remarkably like thorn scratches. And a cat. If he had stumbled back upon it, and it had bounded away, might have hit him behind the knees as it escaped. Its fur, as it rushed past him, would have felt exactly like a bodiless something touching him. Ay, what a coward you are, Ranifer told himself disgustedly. You shied away from nothing, fell into a thorn bush, and frightened a cat as badly as it frightened you. Now you'll never find Gebu. He could be anywhere by this time. Still, he could try. He went to the gate once more and opened it. The street was as black, as threatening, as enig enigmatic as before. There was no shape now upon that wall. Had it really been a cat? Cats could take any shape that they chose, any time they chose. Would a mere thorn bush so much like clutching fingers? Ranifer stared into the darkness, shivering. I, perhaps it was a cat and a thorn bush, he thought, and perhaps it was not. In any case, Gebu was gone. He stepped back and closed the gate, making sure the latch caught securely. Just because there were cats in the world did not mean there were no not kefts also. One was as real as the other, and both were abroad at this hour. He did not care to encounter either again tonight. Next time the hinges squeak, I will follow, Ranover thought as he went back to his mat. The very next time. There was no next time. For several nights he stayed awake as long as he could, but weariness always overtook but weariness always overtook him long before the hour at which the hinges might have squeaked. He changed his tactics and went to sleep early, hoping that by the hour, that hour he might be sleeping lightly enough to wake at any noise. Neither plan produced results.